morning, welcome to day six of Vlogmas. So it is Wednesday the 6th of December and it's about mid-morning here right now. And this morning when we woke up, we woke up to a very, very misty day outside. When we looked out of our bedroom window, you could barely see up the street, it was so misty. It was very cold too, so it was a chilly school run this morning. So I did the school run this morning and then I decided to go out on a run. It was quite a cold run. Um, I had gloves on, but when I got home, my hands were still very, very cold. It took a while to warm back up properly, but I'm nice and warm and cosy um, now. And when I was out, I took a little bit of footage of the mist. So I'll pop that in, in a little bit because I thought you might like to see that. So I got back home. I've done a few jobs around the house and um, got myself dressed um, out of my running clothes and into some proper clothes. So I thought I'd pop on now and share what Elf is up to and what I'm wearing and a few other bits. So I'll start off with what we found Elf up to this morning when we came downstairs. And it seems Elf had delved into my knitting supplies and done a bit of knitting himself. So we found him introducing a little new sheep that he'd knitted to some of the other sheep that live in our house. So I'll pop in a photo as so you can see. So we have a little knitted nativity that I knitted a few years ago that includes some little woolen knitted sheep. And Elf must have borrowed the pattern and knitted up another sheep, but he decided to do it his own way and made a pink sheep um, instead of a kind of traditional white sheep. So, yeah, all the other sheep that had gathered to have a look were looking a little bit puzzled at this little pink sheep that had a little sparkly white face and sparkly legs. It's quite a jazzy little sheep. The shepherds had come along too. There were lots of different toy sheep there, as you can see, all kind of puzzling at this little sheep Elf had knitted. And I've got the sheep here. So you can see up close, it's pretty cute. It's got a little pink fluffy body. And I don't know if you can see, but yeah, the wool that he's used for the head and the legs is a little bit sparkly. So it's definitely quite a, yeah, jazzy, jolly little sheep, but doesn't really go with the traditional knitted nativity that I knitted, but I think now it'll end up being part of it anyway. Um, and my children like the addition of this little pink fluffy sheep. So yeah, I didn't know that Elf could knit. I know he's done some sewing in the past, but I don't think he's done any knitting before. So he's an elf of many skills. So. Yeah, that's what we found Elf doing this morning. My daughter had a good play with all the little sheep um, after she'd found them. So that was a nice start to the day. And then in terms of what I'm wearing today, well, I've got a pair of ready to wear jeans on, but a handmade sweatshirt. And I really like this sweatshirt, actually. I made it a couple of years ago and I made it out of the scraps, um, leftover fabric of two other sweatshirts I made. So I made all three of these sweatshirts. I made this purple one, a sage green one, and this sort of um, mixed one, all um, in, using this pattern here, which is um, the Mylan pattern by Closet Core Patterns, uh, which I mentioned loads of times before. I really like this sweatshirt pattern. And my favourite pattern for this one came out was the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt, which I still love. But the Mylan definitely um, is right up there with the Jarrah, um, vying for kind of the top spots, my favourite sweatshirts. It's a really nice sweatshirt. It's quite a relaxed fit sweatshirt with a classic crew neck, or you can make this view see that has like a hood. Um, but I really like this version here, the classic crew neck version. Um, it's got a dropped shoulder. It's got this yoke at the back. It's got these cool slanted seams that come around the front. And it's got these sleeve darts too, another nice detail. And then it's got cuffs and little bottom band. Um, and it's got a really good size range too. I think closet core patterns go from a size zero up to a size 32, I think it is. Um, I've got the paper pattern, which goes from a zero up to a 20. And I've actually always sized down when I've made this pattern. I've always gone for the straight size zero, even though my measurements would put me across a two to a four, just because when I looked at the finished garment measurements, which you can find inside the pattern, there's quite a lot of ease in this pattern. I didn't want it really oversized. So I've always found the size zero um, seems to just fit me nicely. And there's still quite a bit of room in it. So yeah, um, I originally made a version in the purple, I think, and then I went on to make a version in the green, and then I was quite pleased to find I had enough offcuts in those two fabrics to be able to make this version combine in the two colours. So I had a bit of fun, because I think it's a great sweatshirt to colour block because of the details like the yoke and these sort of slanted side seams. That when you make a colour block version, it really showcases all of those details. And the fabric is a lovely fleece back sweatshirting fabric by Mind the Maker which I love, I've bought in a few colourways now. Um, I'll link it down below, it comes in loads of different colours. And what's cool about it too is there's a matching um, ribbing for every colour. So um, on this top, I've got the green ribbing here and then the purple ribbing around the neckband. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed putting the different colours together. I think they go quite nicely together. For my first two versions of the Mylan sweatshirt, which I made in the plain purple and the plain green, 
I actually lengthened the Marlene sweatshirt a little bit because when I held the pattern piece up against me, it looked like it might come up a little bit short. Um, so they're a little bit lengthened, but this version, because I didn't have so much fabric, I just went for the straight version out of the pattern envelope. So it ends up a little bit cropped on me because I do have a longer torso. I'll stand up a bit so you can see where it comes down to. So it kind of just skirts the top of my jeans. But I actually quite like that. I like how it's turned out. Um, I like my longer versions too, but it's quite nice that this one's a little bit different. I think I did still have enough fabric to be able to lengthen the sleeves slightly, which I always do generally need to do. So I was glad I could squeeze out the longer sleeve still because I wouldn't have wanted like a short arm, but I don't mind a sort of cropped body. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I did a, um, I did a bit of top stitching. You can probably see just about that. I did purple top stitching around the neckline. I used a twin needle there to do that. And I've got some purple top stitching um, down the sides here. And I think I might have done green top stitching to sort of stitch down the yoke at the back here. So yeah, I had a lot of fun with this colour blocked version. It's a really nice, comfy, cosy sweatshirt. This fleecy fabric is lovely and thick and cosy. I'll show you the inside. So you can see it's a really nice, cosy one. So I'll put up a picture so you can see what the sweatshirt looks like on. And you might be able to see in the picture too, I've got on as well some cosy knitted slipper socks, another pair that my mum knitted me. Today I've got on the sparkly purple version. I've got the sparkly pink ones I wore, and I think I showed you earlier in Vlogmas. I've got the sparkly purple ones too, and I've also got a fluffy pair of pink ones as well. So I am feeling nice and cosy in this outfit today. Oh, and I'll show you the sleeve darts too on the, this um, sweatshirt, because I love that detail. And yeah, it's just a really nice, fun sweatshirt to sew this one. It comes together really nicely. And I do think it is great for colour blocking if you've got a couple of scraps of different fabrics um, left over from other projects like I did. So yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. And the next thing I wanted to share is that my son tried on his hat. I forgot to show it to him last night when he got home. We were just busy doing other things. But this morning he tried on the hat I made him yesterday and it does fit him. So I'm really pleased about that. And he let me take a picture of him wearing it. So I'll pop a picture up here so you can see him wearing it. He had it on with his um, pyjamas in the same fabric um, just by coincidence. So he was very matchy matchy in the outfit this morning. So yeah, I'm glad to have got that all sewn up. And then what else did I want to share? Oh yeah, I've got a couple of things I'm going to work on today, I think. While I'm waiting for the wonder tape to arrive so I can get started on my five mood DD zip. So I'm going to wait for that to arrive before I get going on my DD pullover. But in the meantime, I thought I'd get working on a couple of other projects if I have a bit of time today. The first one is a little sewing project um, for my daughter, which is to make her a new pencil case because she has this pencil case here that she's had for a while, which she stores all her colouring pencils in. And as you can see, um, it's sort of split open. And I've tried sort of still taping it back together, but it hasn't worked at all. So I thought, right, let's just make her a nice fabric pencil case that will hopefully last a little bit longer than this one. I think she might have got this one as part of a birthday present a few years ago. But yeah, it just hasn't lasted so well. So I thought, yeah, I'd give, um, have a go at making a fabric pencil case, which isn't something I've done before. I generally, when I'm sewing, do mostly dressmaking projects, as you'll probably know. And I don't often sew other crafty projects other than very occasionally. So it's always a bit of fun, I think, when I do. Like, I really enjoyed earlier this year making the Luskin tire bag from the Guthrie Garni kit. Um, and I have made a couple of bags. And I do enjoy a bit of variety. So anyway, it's quite a simple project, I guess, making a pencil case. So what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to have a look online to find a free tutorial for a sort of lined pen, sort of fabric pencil case. I'm sure there must be one or probably quite a few online. And I'm going to go pop up into the loft and have a look at my fabric suitcase. And in there I've got a sort of folder of fabrics of lots of different sort of cotton poplin, sort of quilting cotton type fabrics. So I thought hopefully I'll be able to find a couple that will go nicely together that my daughter might like that I could use at the outside and inside of the pencil case. So that is my plan this morning to go and find some fabric. And I think also in my little sort of crafting cupboard that I've got in the utility room, I've probably got an old zip or two in there somewhere. I think I have for memory. So I'm hoping I'll be able to make the pencil case from all the things I already have rather than having to buy like a new zip or anything. So that is my plan. So I'll share with you later what fabrics I've come up with for that pencil case. I'm hoping to find those. And then the other thing that I thought I might try to have a think about today too is to start planning what I might like to do to alter a top that I talked about in my handmade wardrobe clear out video a couple of weeks ago when I was going through items that weren't really working for me. And this is the top that I really love, but I don't find it that comfy to wear. So I really want to be able to alter it to make it more comfy so I'll be able to get more wear out of it because I really love this fabric. So this is the top here. 
and I made it in this gorgeous fabric godmother fabric is their Joni stripe fabric and this is the cotton lawn base and it comes into a couple of different bases this fabric and a few different colours too I've got the kind of creamy colour here and there's a pink version and a navy version of this fabric too but I love this fabric I think the colours in it are so pretty I love this sort of floral stripe I think it's a bit unusual and I made this top which is this pattern here it is the um, Tanita top by Fibre Mood I was inspired to put this fabric and pattern together by Lauren from Guthrie Garni. She made a beautiful Tanita top in the viscose version of this Joni um, stripe fabric. But yeah, this is the Tanita top. I think you can make it in either a woven fabric or a stretch fabric. But it's got a boat neck and then it's got a sort of grown on sleeve and then it's quite cropped and it's gathered in at the sleeve and at the bottom by elastic. So yeah, I made my version um, earlier in the year. And um, what I find is that um, with the elastic around the middle and the grown on sleeves, if I ever lift my arm a little bit, it just starts to ride up on me um, and I'm constantly sort of tugging it down. So I don't really want to show my midriff off, but it does keep revealing my midriff as it sort of creeps up. So yeah, I haven't really enjoyed wearing it that much, even though I love the fabric and I really want to love the top. So yeah, I shared this in that video a couple of weeks ago and loads of people um, have commented and suggested things I could do to kind of improve it so thank you very much for anyone who um, suggested something I could do to improve this top and make it more comfy I really appreciate all of the ideas it definitely made me think yes I should really keep this top and try to make it work for me rather than handing on because I do love the fabric the um, bottom here and taking out the elastic and having a look at it once that's out and then thinking what's the next step so yeah if I have a moment today I'm going to try doing that too and I'll maybe try and put it on a bit later and show you um, how it's looking without the elastic in as well so yeah I'll see how I get on with that too but I really love to be able to alter this top make to make it work and feel more comfortable to wear because I do love the fabric so much so that is another thing that I'd like to do today I have got a few other bits to get on with as well so we'll see what I can fit in um, but what I'll do is I'll leave you now with a little bit of footage of the misty morning here and then I'll catch up with you a little later and let you know how I've been getting on with what I've got planned so yeah I'll see you in a little bit bye <laughs> Again, I thought I'd pop on now because I've just started to sort of have a little go of my Tanita top, having a little play with it to see what I can do to hopefully make it a little bit more comfy. So what I've decided to do so far is I um, unpicked a little bit of the hem at the bottom and I removed the elastic because I think um, as it stands, as it has been with the elastic around the waist sort of cinching in, it hasn't been very comfy. So I don't think I want that elastic there anymore. So I thought that's the first job to do. So here is the piece of elastic I've removed um, and I'm going to pop that in my elastic tin um, to be able to use it on a, another project because it's quite a decent length of elastic so it'll be nice to be able to reuse that. So I got that out and then I had a little look and actually I was pleasantly surprised with how much fabric there is to play with at the bottom of the top that's kind of included in the hem. I guess because it's a larger hem because I was making an elastic channel so this is how it's been hemmed and then if you see if I turn it up and then up again there's a bit of extra fabric there. So there is potential to lengthen the top a little bit if I want to, because if I'm not putting elastic at the bottom, I'd be able to make quite a narrow hem at the bottom. I wouldn't need sort of more space for an elastic channel anymore. So I'm quite pleased with that. So I think for the next step, I'm going to unpick all the way around the hem and then I'm going to iron it out and see how it looks um, and see what it looks like a bit longer and without the elastic in and then think about whether I could just hem it again um, long, slightly longer or with a little narrow hem or whether I want to keep it the same length just and it might be better without the elastic or whether I want to go further and do a sort of a more um, involved refashion I guess and start thinking about what else I could do but those are the next steps that's what I'm going to do next on this one 
So yeah, I thought I'd update you where I'd got to. I'm gonna go away and do that. And then I'll pop back on in a bit and I might sort of pop the top on and show you how it's looking with the elastic removed. Um, and yeah, have to think about next steps on that one. I also haven't been in the loft yet to get the fabric down to have a look for my daughter's pencil case. I'm hoping to do that in a moment too. So I will leave you here and I'll pop on a little bit later once I've done a little bit more on this hem, on this tanita top, once I've got that fabric down. So I'll see you again in a little bit. Bye. And as you can see, I've popped the Tanita top on now. So I fully unpicked it and given it a little initial iron so you can see the full length of it. So I'll just stand up a moment so you can see where it comes to now and how it looks with the elastic out. So it's feeling more comfortable with the elastic out. And I quite like this length actually. Well, it's obviously unhemmed at the moment, so I need to, if I want to just keep it like this, I need to maybe overlock the bottom and then turn it under with the tiniest hem. That would probably be my plan. But I quite like it this length actually. I was umming and ahhing about whether I should take it in a little bit of the sides because it is quite wide. I'll stand up a bit so you can see. But actually, I quite like it like that, so I think I'll probably leave it like that. Um, at the moment, you can still see where it's been gathered in a little bit even though I've given it a bit of a press with my steam iron I'm hoping that maybe if I popped it through the washing machine the fabric might relax out a little bit and you wouldn't be able to see it as much as you you can now um fingers crossed um so yeah let me know what you think do you think it would be quite nice if I just um did a very small hem at the bottom and left it like that I'll stand up once again just so you can see again where it comes to And now the elastic's out, it definitely feels like it's not riding up as much when I lift my arms, so it does feel like it'd be more comfortable. I have got it on the moment um, with my t-shirt underneath because it's quite chilly, so I don't really want to take another layer off after I take my jumper off. But yeah, I still think it'd be comfortable to wear now without a t-shirt underneath with a pair of jeans or something like that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. And if you think that'll be good just to hem it like that, I think it might be so. I'd like to hear your thoughts too so I'm quite glad to have just spent a bit of time doing that today it hasn't really taken long at all and it's nice to sort of be moving in the direction of making it more comfy to wear because it is such a pretty fabric it seems a shame not to be able to wear it so yeah let me know but um, yeah, I'm pleased to have sort of started tackling that one today and then I've also been in the loft and I got down my big folder full of um sort of cotton poplin quilt and cotton style cottons and I pulled out a couple of colours that I think might be quite nice for a pencil case for my daughter so these are the fabrics I thought would be quite nice together so firstly this one here which is this cute pale pink color my daughter's favorite color is like a pale pink with these little um darker pink flowers on it I thought that was quite pretty and I thought that would quite go quite well with this plain pink fabric for lining so with the, the flowers on the outside and this color on the lining and actually these two fabrics um, I originally used to make a poof for my daughter for her room which she still has in her room. So I popped up and took a picture of that too. I'll pop it in here so you can see those two fabrics. Um, I made that poof quite a while ago now using a free pattern, which is the Closet Core poof pattern. I think if you sign up to the Closet Core newsletter, you gain access to their free pattern library. And they've got quite a few free patterns on there and quite a range of free patterns too. I think the only one I've actually used to date is the poof pattern, but I've made that a few times. And for my daughter's poof, and I did one for my son too, I just scaled it down slightly, just um because their rooms are on the small side, so I thought a slightly smaller poof would work better in there. But yeah, so I thought those colours would be quite pretty together and make a nice little pencil case. And I had a rummage in my um cupboard of sort of all my sewing supplies, and I found this zip in here, which, which I'd obviously used for something else before because it's been cut at the bottom. I can't remember what. It's like a creamy colour, and I think it will go quite well. Um with those two pinks so it'll be nice to be able to use that as it as well so I haven't actually had a look for a pattern online now but I think I'll probably have a little browse later this evening and come up with one and then hopefully the ones tape will arrive later so I can have a go of using that to put this zip in and also to put in the zip on my DD pullover so I've got a couple of zipped projects coming up so yeah it feels like it's been a productive day 
on the sewing front and I've got quite a few other jobs done today too which has been nice so I think I'll probably finish off this video here we've got quite a nice quiet evening tonight no clubs or anything so I think we could all do with that a nice restful evening particularly because it's quite busy at school at the moment I think it's quite exciting at school as it's the last couple of weeks there's lots going on so my children do seem quite tired um, when they get home and they have been dashing around in the evening so yeah a restful evening tonight will be nice hopefully we'll get a bit more done on the jigsaw puzzle so I can update you on how we're getting on with that the Christmassy puzzle we're working on but yes I'll finish off now get this video all edited and uploaded onto YouTube so thank you so much for joining me for another day of my vlogmas and I look forward to seeing you for day seven tomorrow so yeah see you tomorrow bye <laughs>